On this episode, we're looking at yet another big PlayStation 4 exclusive, this time Detroit Become Human. Detroit Become Human is the latest game to be created by the developers at Quantic Dream, the same developers who most recently created the game Heavy Rain in 2010 and Beyond Two Souls in 2013. Much like Detroit, these were interactive drama action adventure games, giving you choices in how the stories unfold with plenty of branching paths and endings. Interestingly, the game's development dates as far back as 2012 when Quantic Dream released what was supposed to be just a PS3 tech demo video simply called Kara. It was only after the extremely positive reception to the video and interest in what happened to Kara following on from the events of the short clip that prompted Quantic to make it into a full project, entering production in 2014. The story of Detroit Become Human takes place during the year 2038 in, as you no doubt guessed, Detroit City, and is split across three main characters, all of which are different models of Android built for different functions. The first of which is Kara, the original character portrayed in the tech demo, a newly created android with an artificial conscience who is attempting to find her place in the world. She'll however unfortunately find herself being used as an assistant in the household of a single parent domestic abuser named Todd, and she'll need to decide whether she breaks her orders or not in some tough situations after learning just how dangerous Todd can be, not only to herself but his own daughter Alice. The second character is Connor, a highly intelligent prototype police model android with a core function of hunting down deviant androids. Connor is set to accompany an alcoholic detective who doesn't exactly take kindly to his type and must attempt to earn his trust while also finding out more behind the mystery of the deviant androids using his specialised skills. The last character, and the one we've arguably seen the least of, is Marcus. Marcus belongs to Carl, an elderly painter who has lost the use of his legs, initially seeing Marcus as just a machine, but over time begins to form a bond with the android and feel affection for him, even seeing him as a son. This angers Carl's actual biological son, producing no doubt plenty of conflict. Eventually Marcus moves on from simple caregiver to leading an android revolution, seeking the freedom of his kind that he sees as enslaved, left with choosing between violence and pathicism. The plot was written by David Cage, the founder of Quantic Dream and the writer of the studio's previous games. Supposedly it took David Cage over two years to write the plot of the game with a script that amounted to an incredible 2000 pages long. Unlike many games that give you choices, most notably the various and many Telltale games that in a number of cases give you the illusion of choice but often resulting in the same outcome, it appears that this game is less restrictive, placing more weight on your actions. There are no game over screens based on your decisions and any of the main characters can die meaning you'll need to weigh up your options more carefully during your playthrough. With that said, there are no right answers, so go with your gut. The game is said to be around a modest 8-10 to 10 hours, which may not sound like a huge amount, but due to how many branching paths and endings there are, you'll be encouraged to go back and replay events differently long after your first playthrough. In fact, after each chapter you'll be shown a flowchart of all the potential choices that could be made, prompting you to go back and unlock them, and with over 3 times as many as Heavy Rain, it could take you a while to unlock them all. There are also apparently bonuses for unlocking different outcomes, it's not clear exactly what bonuses, but Quantic when asked said concept art and stuff like that, so although it sounds like nothing too substantial, it adds that extra incentive. Detroit Become Human releases exclusively for the PS4 later this month on the 25th of May, which also happens to be the same day that Dark Souls Remastered comes out. As you'd expect with most PS4 games at this point, the title does have HDR and PS4 Pro support, and it seems to be your pretty standard improvement. Due to the game's narrative-driven nature, they've placed more emphasis on visuals over frame rate, so don't expect 60 frames per second on either the standard PS4 or Pro. However, it does appear we'll get a very solid 30 frames per second, which although may be somewhat of a disappointment, for the genre is perfectly serviceable. The game, like so many others, uses a checkerboarding method to achieve a close-to-native 4K image on the Pro, but no matter which you play on, it looks to be one of the most graphically impressive on the console. If you're on the fence about purchasing the game, there is actually a demo on the PlayStation Store that's free to try right now. The demo gives you the opportunity to play as Connor in a hostage situation. It also happens to be the same scenario that was originally shown off during its gameplay reveal in E3 of 2016, so you may have seen it before, but it does a great job of showing you what to expect from the game and how many different options you have to choose from. Quantic's last game, Beyond Two Souls, was not a bad game by any means, but was certainly not their best and arguably the studio's weakest game to date. However, I have good faith that Detroit Become Human is going to be critically well received and I'm really looking forward to it. Let me know down in the comments if you'll be checking out Detroit Become Human later this month, or maybe if you'll be buying Dark Souls Remastered instead. That's it for today. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to see more content just like this. Click the thumbnail on the left or right for another of my videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.